Okay, this is part seven of our Scratch intro tutorial series. In this video, I will be covering how to add basic items and also covering how to create a points variable that tracks how many items you have picked up with your character. Now, this is uh, really one of the core aspects of game development or game theory. You need to have some sort of progression system or collectible system usually in a game uh, where you pick things up and you get a certain score for them. It's not something that's implemented in all games, but it's a pretty common uh, mechanic and uh, useful for understanding some basic code. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to our sprite library here. We're going to add a new sprite. We're going to find something that Scratch wants to pick up for points. So I'm going to click on my choose a sprite button right here. And uh, we're going to take a look at animals. Where are we going to get Scratch to collect? Um, there's a mouse here. Top-down version isn't really particularly uh, appealing to me. Um, what can Scratch collect that kind of makes sense? Now let's take a look at all. Um, we're going to have him collect, I don't know, how about donuts? Maybe our cat loves donuts and uh, he's going to collect those and that will be sort of the thing that is uh, the point mechanic for our game. So I'm going to click on donut. It's going to load it in. It's a giant, giant donut. It's way too big. Um, so I'm going to click on it. We're going to change its size to 30%. Um, that's a reasonable size. Some huge, huge donuts, but you don't want them to be so small that they're not really uh, visible. Um, and let's move this donut into a position. And we're going to do uh, we're going to do two things in this video. Actually, we're going to um, we're going to get our donuts working. We're also going to start uh, a little bit of the level design as in we're going to set a spawn point for Scratch. So where do we want him to start the game? So let's start with creating a spawn point for Scratch so that he just doesn't start wherever we left him from last time. And then we'll get to coding the item. So I'm going to hit the stop button just so that all our uh, coordinates update here in the block area. So I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to click on Scratch. And we are going to set him in the place where we want the game to start. So I'm going to actually use the top left-hand corner as a starting position. So I'm going to drag him over here, make sure he's nice and comfortable within that space. He's not overlapping anything. Making sure this is stopped. I'm going to grab a go to XY coordinate block. And this only has to run once. It's important that it only runs once. If you stick this in a forever block, he will stop being able to move because it will be forever going back to this coordinate. So this is Updated here, negative 209, 9152. Notice that's also the coordinate of Scratch, which is showed right here with Scratch selected. And that's why you press stop. That makes these one, this basically will then pull the XY coordinates uh, for whatever sprite you're uh, currently looking at. So I'm going to click on Scratch. I'm going to grab this go to XY. I'm going to drop it right here at the very start. So at the start of the game, he will always go there once. So executes it once. So even if I put him over here, we press the start, he will always start up there. So that's a basic uh, level spawn start point. Uh, useful to have so that your guy always starts in a sort of a logical position. Okay, let's move on to creating an item that gives you points. If we click on our donut, you can see it's totally blank. Within Scratch, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, um, one of the things you kind of have to keep uh, keep in your mind is that Basically, each sprite has a brain, for want of a better term. So Scratch here, we've got the movement code. It's in his brain, which means that this code basically activates for this sprite. If we drag this code over and put it in the donut, the donut would walk around and respect boundaries. Um, the level has a little bit of code right now, which is basically just a code that tells it to always center itself and be at 100% uh, size. Um, Scratch has code here for movement or donut as of right now, has no code, nothing interacts with it, and it does nothing. So, what do we got to do? What we have to do is we have to create um, a, a basic bit of code that senses when Scratch touches the donut, right? Because that's kind of the trigger that's going to cause us to get a point and cause the donut behavior to run. So it's not going to do anything until Scratch touches it. So we want to put this in the donut because the donut will then execute a series of actions as opposed to programming Scratch to sense whether he's touching the donut. Uh, this code should be in the donut's brain. So as always, we start with an event block. 
uh, which is when the green flag starts, because that's when we want that code to start running as soon as the game starts running. We're going to use that same forever block we used for uh, movement sensing because we want it to forever be checking. If we instead just had an if then statement like this, this would literally only run when the flag was clicked. It would click, if this, then this, and then done. We need this code to run repeatedly so that it's always checking to see if it's true. So we're going to grab a forever block and we're going to grab this block right here, drop it inside. So we're going to forever check if touching scratch. And if you remember, touching is a sense. So if touching scratch or whatever you named your, uh, your sprite. If you named your sprite a different name, there'll be a different name there for the sprite. It'll automatically update as well. So you'll notice here, if we go to Scratch, and I click on Scratch, and it's changed his name to uh, Jerry. And then I go back to the donut. Notice that it says, if touching Jerry. And then I go back to uh, Scratch here, and I'll uh, change his name back to Scratch. Just hitting Enter there to, uh, to input it. Okay, so let's go back to our donut. Uh, if touching Scratch, what do we want it to have? Uh, what, what do you want to have happen when Jerry... No, sorry, not Jerry. Scratch. It's back to Scratch. What do we want to have happen when Scratch touches the donut? Well, for one thing, we want to get a point. Um, points are a variable. So uh, we haven't touched these before, but variables are found down near the bottom. They're the darker orange color. And variables are numbers. So um, variables are essentially numbers with names. Right now, there's only one variable called my variable. Uh, that is set in here. So when you're creating any sort of a variable, you have to give it a name and you click on make variable in order to make it. Now, the name is primarily for your own benefit and anyone who has to look at your code's benefit. Uh, you can literally name your variable anything as long as it does what it needs to do. Essentially, you code it to do what it needs to do. It doesn't necessarily matter, but it's going to make things really confusing for you. So I'm going to click on make variable right here. <clears throat> And I'm going to call this variable name points. Leave it for all sprites, not for this sprite only. So new variable name, points. Okay. And I'm going to uh, see it appear right here. Notice there's a little check mark beside it. Check mark is basically the visibility of this little tracker here that appears when you create a variable. So if I clicked on the my variable, it would show up there too. My variable is not useful to us. Points variable is what we want. If you can click and drag this, you can move it around to its position on the screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I'm going to have it sit down here. If you double click on it, it switches to sort of like three basic way, three basic um, sort of uh, displays. I like to keep it on this one, um, so it's normal, large, and small. Um, I'm going to keep or on and slider. I'm going to keep this one. In that style put it down here in the bottom corner so it's kind of out of the way now you don't have to track points using this sort of a uh, display you can actually program and code in your own custom one if you want to make your own sort of custom uh, HUD or heads up display for your game but that's a little bit more work and it's not something we're going to get into for the basic intro tutorial although I have done it for a lot of my other games it's not actually that difficult Anyway, we've created a points variable, and so set to zero, you touch the donut, or essentially the donut touches scratch, and we're going to change the points. Really easy to do. We only have a few options here as far as blocks. So we're going to change points by one. Drop that in there. Change points by one. Let's give that a little test, see what happens. Go over here to the donut. Take a look at how fast those points are going up. That uh, basically gives you a pretty good idea of how many times per second uh, this is running. Um, quite a bit per second. <laughs> that's uh, that's not good, and that's not what we want. We want to, uh, generally speaking, when you grab an object in a game, um, you want to pick it up, and it, and the pickup isn't actually you're not physically picking up. It basically just disappears, and you get the little check off that you've uh, that you've done the thing. So let's, uh, let's deal with two issues here. One, the incredible amount of points we currently have, and two, having this item disappear once you touch it. Disappearing or um, showing an 
basically changing the visibility, which can also be controlled down here in the sprite um, sprite sort of palette, is really easy to do. If an item has ever disappeared and you can't find it, just double check right here that your show is set to visible, not invisible. So we're going to go to our looks, which is the purple. We haven't used this one before yet. Uh, we're click on that. It's quite a few looks. We're going to scroll down and grab the hide block. And basically just turns our visibility to off. Uh, the way Scratch works is that if an object is hidden or a sprite is hidden, it does not interact with other objects. So you essentially can't sense that you're touching it if it is hidden. Um, which is fine, but a little annoying if you're trying to do some of the other more complex coding, uh, coding scripts and you'd love to be able to work with hidden objects that actually do sense things. But for the, for the case of this basic intro to to scratch and block coding. This is fine for our purposes. So we're going to have it hide. Now an important thing to remember when you're working with hide hide blocks is that you then also always need a show block. Um, in this case you only need it to show once which is at the beginning but if I for instance go up here and I touch that um, and then I go away and I click the green flag I reset here because we already coded that in but this guy doesn't come back because it's still hidden. It's basically in Scratch, it'll always basically read whatever your last state for whatever state it happens to be was and leave it as that, whether that's your coordinates or your visibility, size, etc. So we're going to grab a show block to make sure that it shows up every time you restart a game. We're going to grab that, and because it's only once that it needs to happen right at the start, I'm just going to drag and drop it in here between the green flag clicked and the forever check if touching Scratch. Okay, give this a little test. Go down here, we're at 940,180 points, so 181. We only got one point when we grabbed it because we essentially touched it, changed the points by one, and then hit it, right? Um, perfect. Now we just need to deal with the, uh, the insane number of points we have. Notice when I reset this game, the points do not reset. So we need to make sure that we have that set as well. I like to keep sort of the variables all um, all within one um, within one sprite so that I always know where they are. In this case, I'm going to drop them all in my level sprite. So I'm going to go to my level sprite, go to the code section, game starts, go to XY. In this case, we're also going to set the variable for points. Really easy to do. Set variable, so set points. And we start with zero points, so set points to zero. Really easy to do. Um, so what we've been doing here, and let's give that a little test, make sure it works. Points zero, go and grab the donut. Points one, really easy basic points uh, system. What's really neat now, if we re reset this and stop it, is I can right click on my donut here and hit duplicate. Let's do it five times. I've got five donuts now. You'll notice as I click on each of these, because I duplicated it, they all also duplicated the code inside. Now, I'm going to just move them to various points in this game uh, for me to go and collect. So I now have uh, a couple different donuts that I need to go get. Last thing I want to do before we end this little section of the tutorial is just make sure that each of these always spawns in the correct spot. So making sure this is set to stop. Starting with donut one, I'm going to my motion blocks. I'm going to use the go to XY coordinate block, and I'm just going to drag and drop it right in the top on each of these. Notice, because I've hit the stop, these coordinates change to match the coordinates of where each of these donuts are. So I'm going to drag and do this five times. I'm going to zoom in here for my last one so you can see it a little bit better. So you'll notice this donut is at negative 201.97. Go to XY, negative 201, 97. There we go. So now, if I start moving them around, um, and I hit reset, they always pop back to their original position. If you do want them to spawn somewhere else, you'll have to go back in and change those coordinates. That is the basics of creating items and uh, points within your game.